thank God for being able to give the privilege to address you this morning to my pastor behind me. And thank you, sir. Amen. 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 Sir. A lot of pastors don't give people like this opportunities. Amen. Amen. Thank God for him. I'm happy to see all of you this morning and I, I see some not so familiar faces and I see some familiar faces um, that I haven't seen in a long time. James, good to see you, man. Oh, let's give James a round of applause, man. Right? Good to see you. Turan, Turan, give him a round of applause too. He came up here too. I, I, I see a, a, a young lady sitting on the side of him. I, 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 I would guess that's a special lady to him. Amen. She's visiting with him. So let's give him a round of applause. Welcome. To you, Sister Butler, we say congratulations as you celebrate milestone. Um, Reverend Brown, Pastor Reverend Brown, Minister Brown, Reverend Brown, good to have you. And all of you God saints, the thing that our new department go under um, this month is for who am I? And um, this question was asked and, uh, by a, a whole lot of persons during this month. And um, your identity, all right? Um, it's something that is basically known only to you. Your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your hair, color your skin, you ladies, the curves, amen. You men, your chest, or oh, that fade you. Work on every morning. Amen. Who am I? It also speaks of something also known to you, your character, your personality. Maybe you have a personality similar to your mother, a personality similar to your father, a personality similar to somebody else, but everything about you is your identity. And it's known only to you. Only you have that identity, amen? amen. Only you have the fingerprint on your hand. No two persons have the same fingerprint. Well, there are some identical twins um, that look alike. They still differ in terms of their identity in some way or form. Your physical appearance, we realize, can be changed, can be altered. You know, some women, you know, they have short hair, so they put on a little longer hair. Amen? A lot of women, a lot of women are known for this too. They go on a little dark as this microphone in front of me, but. They want to be a little light skin, amen? amen? So they bleach and they do all this stuff. And then, you know, some of us, you know, we like food, amen? amen. So, um, it's going to be a challenge for some of us because, you know, we try to lose those unwanted pounds, but that's your outward physical appearance. That basically men see. The question is, who am I? What is my purpose? What does God see? What does God say that I am? Who does God say I am? You know, many times we, we tend to focus on all that is good on the outside, but many times we forget the inner. Amen. And to find out who am I, you have to go to the person who created you. Young people, you know, we, we can spend a whole year trying to figure out 
figure out who we are, trying to find ourselves. And I realized that all the persons too still trying battling and who are you? What is your purpose here on earth? But to be able to answer that, you must seek the person that created you. And he basically inspired some men and wrote the Bible and came up with a whole lot of answers. And the uh, Psalms 139 says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. Thou knowest my downsitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought of far off. Amen. Thou, O oh Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thy hand upon me. Amen. And this whole Psalm 139 speaks about the Lord. No matter what family you were born, born into and what your family may be known for in terms of their character and their personality, amen. I realize that, you know, if it's not all good, you don't have to live by that. Because some people glory in it and this is who I am, you know, and you know, we, you know, this is how we, we operate in terms of our family and this, that, and this is who I am, but I realize looking a certain way and many times it's not until persons realize what you got to treat you a certain way, amen? Amen? And whether you may be poor, the word of God says we count on a thousand hills. All belongs to him, so even if you don't have the type of money that somebody else I think he 
says something, you know, and they, they say something that you can use the word Negro. That made the word, amen. But these words are, are labeled upon our young men and our young women, amen. And the, they give the word, you know, the B word, the woman now. I can say, bitch. That's the word that they give to our females. And bit by bit, I realized that a lot of our young people, we feel fine with being called that because, you know, it now wears down on how silly the word is, how demeaning the word is. We seem to like take on these stuff, but to our young people, our scripture speaks that you are a chosen generation, amen? You are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, amen? To our parents, some of our parents, they, 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 you know, they're not as nice. Sometimes if, if daddy walk out or daddy is a certain way, we in my child and say, hey, you can be no good just let the part, amen? Amen? That I am more than a conqueror. Amen? Yes. What does God's word say you are? I realize that it's not basically the young people. Many times you're going to be called these things, but it's not all that you are called because you will be called some of these things. But I come to realize it's what you answer to. Amen?
but you still have to act a certain way. Now we know one of them, you know one of them still go off and you know. Sometimes I realize, I guess they realize that keeping that royal status is much more difficult than they can handle. So many times they just say, you know, I can put this down, I can just enjoy myself. Amen. But I come to, like I said, realize that we as a church, our spiritual mothers, our spiritual fathers, we have to constantly remind our young people of who they are in Christ. The church's name speaks of us as being a peculiar people. And the word peculiar speaks of persons that are different, special, set up. Amen. You know? As how the world is. And bit by bit, I realize that the world is not seeing us as peculiar as we ourselves are supposed to be. Bit by bit, we, we do things and we, we seem to like to do stuff to please the world. We want to do things a certain way to please how the world sees us. So we don't do you know, as all that the Lord speaks of us doing the world, somehow is not seeing all that we speak about. They want to look at us and should look at us as a strange, strange believing in a God you can't see. Amen? Strange believing that God will, this God will supply you the strange
he wasn't able to afford haircut or buy the type of clothes he was used to. Amen? He wasn't able to go to the restaurant anymore and enjoy a steak.
you're mistreated. Amen. You have to realize one thing that you got to make a decision. And you know, with a lot of young people who just discovering love and discovering all these boyfriend and girlfriend stuff, you know, it's hard to break up. Amen. Hello. You. I I love him. No, he, he, he only hit me once. Amen? He only threatened me once. I invite him to my church, but he said he ain't for that. You are somebody that don't respect your faith. Amen? And you think that they are important enough to be in your life. If they can't attend your church, amen, you committed in the choir, amen. You committed in your church. And if they can't respect, amen, I realize one thing too, you 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 got a you have a job to, you know, it, it also depends on you. What a, a person seeing in you that they would want to basically come and be a part of what you are involved in, amen? But you have to realize you have a certain status to maintain, amen? And unless you now change some persons within your environment, bit by bit, they're going to change you. You have to remind yourself that you are chosen and you are royal, amen? I, you know, I don't know if some husbands can attest to this, you know, there, there's sometimes that I realize um, how special your mate is and according to what type of status you hold in your home or wherever. You know, and I didn't talk with my wife because she do something special for me. Amen? Amen. Keep in mind. <laughs> and from my man, from my man, my wife, I met, I don't know, I went from my, you know, went to the house and, you know, she bought me any food or I always appreciated she would bring the food and then she would bring this fork and knife nicely wrapped up in the pan towel. And it was fine, you know, if you're eating a piece of steak or a piece of chicken. But we've been married for eight years and my wife still does that today, but what what amazes me, amen. <laughs> I could have scrambled eggs and she would bring a fork in there. <laughs> Amen? I want a cup of tea, she's gonna bring that with a sauce under it. Amen? And, and you know, perhaps I, I, I really never told her how special that meant to me, but the way the, that treatment to me, you know,
must be maintained. Try to be walking too. But the nails, 